Time for a new segment called Undiscovered Masterpieces of the Cinema. Don't be scared. Uh, we don't have one of those signs, unfortunately, because it was an accident in the art department. So instead, Maria from our studio audience is helping out. Give her a hand. <laughs> It's a kind of uh, consumer guide to the hidden gems that lie buried at your local video shop. And this week, well, we've got an Australian film because it was the AFI Awards last night. And I don't know why this film wasn't nominated, Houseboat Horror. <laughs> there it is there. <laughs> and it's described as Australia's first made-for-horror video or made-for-video horror spectacular. Our finest actors, listen to this, you've got Alan Dale from Neighbours. Uh, you've got Animal. Remember the drummer from Hey Hey Saturday? Down <laughs> And in a bizarre cameo, John Michael Hausen. Now, also in the cast is, uh, remember this guy, Molly Meldrum's countdown sidekick, Gavin Wood. And uh, he proves himself to be a master of improvisational dialogue. Hey, guys, girls. Party time. Come up here. The oh, it's news magnificent. You're far up. <laughs> Could that have been scripted? <laughs> now, the, uh, the rock video angle of uh, Houseboat Horror allows the filmmakers to indulge themselves with some truly spectacular musical numbers. Have a look. You'll be pleased to know that most of those characters are subsequently hacked to death by the killer. <laughs> and I think that was one of the knockout Brian Manic song hits I referred to earlier. Now, we can't really show you any of the blood-gushing mayhem from this film, uh, but we've got one moment here, but I should warn you, it may be too intense for nervous or sensitive viewers. Do that. <laughs> yes. As you can see, Gavin's got all the good lines. Jimmy Costello, which was always the name. If I ever went bust in radio and creditors were trying to find me, I'd get I'd I would i would go over to Perth and uh, and get a job on radio there and my name would be Jimmy Costello. <laughs> that was that that was my alter ego. Oh wow. <laughs> So you, yeah. you, got, you got to play with that and be in your own little imaginating world, really, playing that character. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. I mean, that, that movie, uh, I mean, people are still talking about it. It's like Countdown, you know. It's, it's, it, it was done with, you know, the best intentions and it was done with heart. But that movie uh, was done for $10,000. Wow. Uh, yeah, we got $10,000 out of the underground disco <laughs> uh, and it paid for... Oh, some some of the crew, uh, I did it for nothing. Uh, a lot of people did it for nothing. They they ran out of money for catering, so one day we got lettuce sandwiches for lunch. Oh wow! And that's when we realised that things aren't going too well here. The director, uh, Kendall Flanagan, had a heart attack uh, halfway through and couldn't continue on. So so Ollie Martin had to carry on and be be the director. Oh, it was just. It was a mess. The uh, the film crew and the television crew, uh, it was kind of half half, and the film crew hated the television crew because the television crew were all falling down drunk, and and the film crew were very professional. Uh, so there, <laughs> there was a lot of that. There was just a lot of booze, and and uh, I think we worked for booze for two weeks up at Eildon. You know, it was it was look, we I, we'd never made a movie before, and I think you know just the. The idea of making a movie was very romantic, and and we did it. God damn it, you know, albeit that bad, but we did it. The the line that you're really known for in that movie was saying, "The view's magnificent. You'll bar up." Now, yeah, yeah, was that an improv line or was that in the script? Yeah. No, it wasn't in the script. They just they just said, "Get up there and and be excited about the view." And I went, "Oh God, okay." I said. Hey, fellas, girls, guys, come up here. It's magnificent. The view's, the view's magnificent. You'll bar up. <laughs> and, and then they went, perfect. <laughs> that is One amazing. Take. And isn't it funny? Just a simple little thing like that, you know, it stands out and, and remains, 
part of the uh, part of the culture. I, I, I think it's magnificent that uh, this uh, ten thousand dollar movie is still getting people talking about it. It's it's quite amazing. A few years ago, I think it was the first APR Tom Alive tour, and. Brian Mannix uh, was in town, and so we did a presentation yeah, with him. Yeah, and I showed him. Yeah. I, I tracked down the copy of Housebat on DVD and showed it to him, and he just laughed his head off. And he goes, "Mate, this is a pure piece of shit. I love the fact that it is shit." Yeah, yeah, and on the front, it's got with snappy Brian Mannix hits or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> knock out Brian just Mannix hits, and he just knock, out, his knock eyes. out Brian Mannix hits. That's right, because he wrote all the music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. There was a lot of fun times, not necessarily in the movie, just a lot of fun times during that movie it basically was it was just uh, controlled chaos and um and as i said before a lot of vb 